follow the podcast from now. I can't believe you said that. We, I hate you. Every episode we do, it starts with, oh, well, we can't put that out. Yeah, well, we can't. So now there we go. It's so fine. on the podcast, I was telling you, they've just got cut that on the back of the wall because it's like cut that. You cut that. God, I can't. I can't I'm, I'm glad we're pretty good at censoring ourselves because I cannot be dealing with having to edit all that shit. Oh, out. yeah, it's too long. Honestly, so we've so got pretty good at just nailing a good episode. I don't have to really do a lot anymore we now. Start, oh, we, we literally start for the clap, end when we say we're done. Done. Exactly. Easy. Good uh, stuff. Um, you guys all right? Yes. Are you all right? I'm fine, yes. I'm sat here wearing a nappy. But careful, I am wearing shorts. Well, a nappy? On the last episode, it was, Mike, it was Mike's <laughs> quads that were literally dominating the uh, the video. I've got to pull them down, actually. Oh, good. Do you know who I spoke to the other day? Hey, let me get... Hello. Do you know who I spoke to the other day? Josh Baker. Oh, yeah, I did as well. Because uh, he's in Austin, Texas. He does live in Austin, Texas. And I'm going to Texas. Oh, you should totally hook up. Yeah, we are. We're going to meet up. On the 9th oh, of August, that's I hope. nice. Go for a sesh, hopefully. For uh, you listeners at home, um, Josh Baker is just a friend of ours who we know, who we've known for many years. That's yeah, about, about the size of it. Went to school with him. He and I went to the uh, the Arnold Classic together uh, many years ago in Madrid. Is that when he had a diabolical trim? He said, show me one of his. He's had a few. I mean, we both. We've, we've yeah, both. he's had some pretty casual. <laughs> to be fair, we've all had some shit. I've had some. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've had some. What's your bad. worst haircut you've ever had? Uh, when okay, I remember. I could say this off the top. Literally, don't even think about it. When I was in year seven, was that like eleven years old? Uh, well, year six, I dyed the middle of my hair blonde to get a blonde mohawk because my sister's boyfriend at the time had one that was cool <laughs> then I got banned from having the mohawk from school so I just had a blonde patch in the middle of my hair so I look like a skunk a skunk and uh, so everyone used to be skunk I'm really upset skunky I have a picture of it as well <laughs> it's a picture of on my phone uh, that's good I look honestly if I can find the picture I want to find the picture to show you because I look unwell uh, you're like that man is 11 years old and I look like I just come out of the thing is like time. I what what I considered great haircuts back then looking back now people would laugh at shocking. there was a period in the in the kind of early to mid 2000s where we all had long long hair I mean yeah, Michael yeah, always, yeah, yeah. Mike always no, has long hair but I, had, it but I had big hair like because I was in a band I was touring and everything yeah, yeah. and so I had like just hair with loads of crap in it just to make to look like a bird's nest and just That's big hair bird. I had hair straighteners everything uh, yeah I was I was the works but it was all part of my kind of media profile kind of vibe so media profile. I my shit hair was when I discovered gel oh, no. and um, I had Ross short, from Friends I had short hair no you know, the, you know the Statue of Liberty has those like spikes. Oh god! You you have, have, so I look oh, like the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> we all had friend at school that did their did their yeah. their quiff like those points. I wasn't that was guy from? Do you ever do you ever watch Pimp My Ride? Of course, yes, and then that exactly. one guy that had like massive yeah. spikes. Is that you? I used yeah. to love that. Did process. you look like Guy Fieri from Diners, Drive-ins, and Dives? I wish. Awful. Yeah, awful. <laughs> I um I, I used to love Pimp My Ride. I remember all the people came With out exhibit. afterwards. Yeah, obviously X to the Z, Jesus. I remember all the people afterwards came out like about what happened to their car next and they're like, Yeah man, they didn't fix any of the mechanical problems, it broke down. <laughs> they said they put in two twenty four inch jackhammers. It broke down the next day. Literally polishing a turd, that program. So literally, it was, they used to <laughs> put GameCube in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's like, wow. Cars. They used to put the most incredible things in there, and they were like, "Yeah, man, my car doesn't have the power or capacity to run this." Yeah, so Jimmy really likes to cook. So what we've done is we put this oven in here, and we got a deep fat fryer because he loves his wings. Um, it's not a health and safety risk at all. He's gonna love this. The fat going everywhere. That's not a problem. We put a little drain at the bottom. I remember when they two um, miles to the gallon. They tried to make uh, <laughs> they tried to make uh, the exhaust just like spit like loads of flames and then after they're like yeah man that's illegal we've got to take that <laughs> off I was like oh god who's that, was that uh, Charles Art was that, uh, who's the audio guy Mike was it Mike you uh, could say any name I wouldn't care I think would say like, yes oh yeah probably him oh, I loved him what a great show <laughs> then Westwood came over to the UK version it was pants well, well you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to say his he's, name now he's been cancelled so. he's very much been yeah. cancelled I, I don't keep up with him what's happened to him D- just, he's just gone, gone down the pedo well like everyone else he's, has is he <laughs> no, he's no, well. Has she, wait when did this happen no oh, I'd not known about this <laughs> to be fair no it wasn't pedo well it was the um, it was the rape, rapey well the rapey well, rapey yeah, well yeah. just he, to clarify neither well is a good one no, to go down with would not, they are, not they are almost well. linked these wells it, they're next to each other it would not end well yeah <laughs> I see we did that thank you wait when was this oh like two years yeah, ago yeah like two years max basically what all the story all the stories came out about Westwood basically being a um, you know rapey old dodgy man which is hilarious because I've got a video of me lending him a charger when he came into one of my restaurants once and now I can't be you know that's not a good thing anymore it's not claim to fame anymore it's not great he abused um, his position it. of power 
Yes. I'm an influence. That's a fair, fair that, comment. That's mm. very common, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. This but is news to I'm, me. I'm waiting for it all to come out about the TFNL kind of side of things. Now, you, now that you've hit like <laughs> 60,000 subscribers, I was like, the, only, the, the well, stories of you ab- ab- abusing your power now. Video. What would you do with that power? What, if, you, if, if you I had power, power yeah, yeah. I'd probably buy more animals. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll probably get a dog or a the son posting stories about how he basically you know Harry's mistreated his animals because, he, because yeah. he gave his cat a whole steak once that's true you gave so, a cat a whole steak yeah a 250 gram rump steak from, but to clarify I didn't give it to him I left it on the side to defrost okay we've all been there schoolboy yeah, and came back yeah. but to clarify is a it was a juicy steak came back and the packet was on the floor with a massive bite mark through it and just a cat with loads of blood around his mouth I was thinking wow Guess who's going to have diarrhea today? You are. Guess who's going to have to clean up? I am. One of my mum's dogs used to be pretty good at f- like just snaffling food without anyone noticing. Like I remember one time he'd crept upstairs back when I'd moved back home many, many, many years ago and he'd crept upstairs and found a uh, leftover takeaway pizza that I'd had in Ooh, my bedroom. I respect that, yeah, yeah. And he basically just rinsed the topping off. Oh, That's what my cat does. So when I ha- if I once in a blue moon when I have pizza because I don't really like pizza, but if I'm desperate, I'll like calories. I always save a slice for my cat. Just takes the topping off the and cheese. Was, ultimately, yeah, it takes the dairy. Topping of the cheese, on, but then I literally always give. Him, I put him next to him on the box. Say some more. He also s- he also stole a bag of chocolate money around Christmas time out of a shopping bag. Did eat the foil as well. I think it was just basically a pile of shredded foil, and obviously yeah, like got that. through to the good stuff. My uh, friend's dog has eaten. A kilo of dairy milk, milk uh, fruit Chocolate's and nuts. bad for dogs. Yeah, yeah, but they love it. But evidently, <laughs> yeah, they do love they it. Love it. But evidently, they love it, and it's probably fine as long as it's like the shitty basic chocolate. Imagine if I said to you, Mike, here's some rice in, and you're like, oh, I love it. Yeah, oh, probably can't get it. enough. It's as long as favorite. it's what, yeah. as long as it's cut with something with dairy, with milk, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, one no. watered yeah, down no. with milk, it's fine. One of my dogs before he died nearly died. Uh, because you know obviously a corn on the cob happy yeah? story yeah you know obviously the corn on the cob yes you, you take the corn off the and you've got the spine corn. yeah yes well guess who ate the spine oh, oh nice um, oh yeah yeah so yeah. obviously we didn't see this uh, by the way and then he has some bowel issues but like, I was like something's wrong with this dog so he's doing some he's not looking a happy boy so we took him to the vet so they're like oh he's fine he'll be alright and then we're like okay fine the vet said he's fine next day I was like yeah he's really not well he's I think he's been I think he's throwing up some blood I was like this is problematic my sister's like it's obviously her dog she's like I'm taking him back to the emergency vet so I was like yeah go somewhere else got there and she was like this is an emergency um, <laughs> and they did a scan it's like yeah he's about to die um, if you left him another couple of hours he'd probably be dead well, we're like, what's happening he goes, he's got something lodged in his bowel and it's, kill- it's killing his bowel so it's dying inside of him like his bowel is dying um, so they obviously removed it and they pulled out a spine of the corn on the cob and it had gone black from all the like a- like all the acid and shit I mean we don't need all the details well you're going to and my sister kept it in a jar for three years and would make people smell what's it what's wrong like, with hey, your family this. man she was like smell this I was like no so I binned it when she moved out um, and I, but he survived until he didn't. Why do you keep that? I didn't keep why, it. Why, her. Did, why did she? She's a wrong one. Sniff this. Yeah, literally, she is a little jar. Like, yeah, smell this. Did, like, she, ah. did she keep farts in a jar as well? That's been me, days. That's you all over that. You wait a bar while lounge opens. I'm the per- first person to find the jar in the gym. To clarify, I've never actually farted in a jar, by the way. I mean, I don't know what to believe anymore. Same. Well, I'm so upset about Westwood. I don't know what to believe either. Didn't didn't know that. Very upset now. There you go, that'll teach you for To clarify, not upset, because every time I watched him, he made well, me feel very uncomfortable. Evidently, you know... Yeah, it's almost like, it's like, how did not... Uh... I'm going to be honest with you, it's like the Jimmy Savile thing. So, are you I, surprised? Yeah, well, this is the thing is, when we used to watch TV when I was a kid, I'd say to my dad, that man's really scary. Whenever I and used I to don't watch, understand yeah. why. Like, obviously, with Westwood, for example, whenever I used to watch UK Pit My Ride, I always felt really uncomfortable about him. Something I was like, that's easy. Always ro- watching your granddad try and be 19. It was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. I was very like, mm. You're a bit of a I feel runner. like we need to move away from contentious subjects because I'm going to start talking about this recent BBC thing, and I think that's probably bad. I don't. Oh, yeah, I don't news, really news today. I don't. We, we don't well, know who it is, do we? Well, we do now. Do we? But <gasps> equally, it's it's still not proven. Who? who well, I who, can't. Shouldn't mention it because it's not fair. Uh, allegedly, I won't say it. it yeah, but yeah, I'm can, you sh- yeah, can you show me, please? Can you show right. me, please? Karen talking. I'll find it. Yeah, yeah, please. Well, you probably won't find it, but it's kind of pretty much confirmed. Put it this way: they Can you w- put it in the chat? Put it this way: they weren't read. They weren't reading the news at ten last night. 
I don't watch the news at 10. Give, put, give me a name. Text me. You're not going to know the name because you show probably just don't know. I'll show you a picture. This is where you now need to cut and put an interlude sound like some little elevator music and then do, cut do, do, back do, do, do. to a spot. I want to oh. be the very best that no one ever was. Bum, 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 to catch them as my real Have you been watching Pokemon again? No, but it's came to my head. Oh, is it? Oh, oh do, I didn't like didn't him anyway. Didn't he give... No, I'm not thinking about it. Let's just not go there. <laughs> anyway. There's no need. Anyway, look. Um, Why is everyone the wrong one? Why are people just being well, silly? It's, it's only a matter of time before, like, you get found out, let's be honest. What, found out for what? Overfeeding my cats? Correct. Correct. Probably, yeah. I mean, you're going to have Peter all over you soon. <laughs> Literally. I probably will, too, bear. I, I treat I treat the cats like humans. I'm like, you're getting chicken today. Did, um... Well, Everyone get the brief about the episode. Chat. Yeah, yeah. Let me get, it, let me get. It. I mean, you don't need to get it out. Yeah, as long I can't remember. Just remember. It. No, I can't remember. That. Yes. Yeah. Good. Fine. I know a couple of things on there. Joe Thetics, remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. So that was really sad. That, that's I, I a don't preamble. know enough about him. That's a preamble so chat anyway, so I we can pick like that up now. You guys could film me. In. Well, I don't. I don't either, but I knew he would. But I, I don't consume his content, but I know of him, and so I know the the German. The, German or Austrian? Something like that, yeah. But he Joe I think Aesthetics, that, another basically He's thirty years old, yeah. Yeah. But Oh dude. So unfortunately very sadly died. Yeah, so the claim, I don't know if anything's been updated. The last I heard was he um allegedly passed away from a brain aneurysm or an aneurysm. Yeah, I, I read that. But apparently so did his aunt. It's um, really hard it's really hard to kind of because obviously you see all the comments when stuff like this happens and there's usually like a massive like Conversation gear, about. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> put that on the window ledge, please. Come on. Grab it, wait, grab it, grab it. Just put it, it should stay up there. There you go. There you go. So I just tried to make myself more comfortable. The, um, I'm not like trying to hurt for, me. for podcast listeners, the Pump Fiction sign fell on the chat. I've just been abused. Uh, for Mike. YouTube viewers, you would have seen that. So. Mike, cancel, cancel Mike, cancel Mike, cancel Mike. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, I, yeah, it's really tough when people in fitness who clearly have taken copious amounts of well he was, he was open about his enhancements yeah that's fine I've got no problem with that I mean, but, I think he had to be didn't he but but then how, how can you have a discussion afterwards about the cause of death when you've got all these kind of factors at play well I think I think there are loads of things you can say genetic obviously with his aunt and whatnot. Um, obviously the PD use of just unfortunate circumstances things like that I think the I, again, this is just what I've, I've read online. I don't know how much of this is true, but so allegedly Greg Dissett was his coach. Oh, I, I, yeah, I know. We um, know this, and yeah. apparently, well, apparently he obviously apparently also coached the Trend Twins. The Trend Twins, yeah. what a name. Yeah, literally. Um, I mean, there's no beating around the bush. I don't there. even know who they are, but I kind of get the yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> And apparently they had to come off cycle because of some pretty bad health concerns when Greg was coaching them and also Joe's obviously now passed away with Greg coaching so I'm not ever accusing anyone but there, no. there is a consideration of could some of the practices may have maybe have contributed it's just like you have to say mm. but again, that, I don't know is that guy mm. would that guy still be alive now had he led a normal healthy life without augmentation well you don't know would that guy be alive now if his cycle was different yeah so you I just, just don't this know. is it and that's just what I'd like I don't know I get kind of a bit blase about it all because it just makes me sad when people yeah. well from what I've seen of his content and from what people have said about him he seemed like a really good dude this is like the a problem. really nice friend mm. such a lovely person but ultimately to get because because ultimately Instagram and social media make heroes out of these people because they're so massive and look incredible and don't get me wrong they do look incredible but because they become heroes it only fuels more people to go to these extremes at young ages I think I'm almost like a martyr isn't it like yeah, yeah. Kind of become like this whoa like, like yeah like Yaziz character yeah that was, also, <laughs> yeah. That was sad itself yeah. I think I think it's sad like how many people unfortunately especially of recent years have passed away due to whatever it may be health complications that may have been mm. exacerbated by PDs like even like obviously Boston Lloyd and people like that you're thinking like well it's getting a bit extreme in some cases though, isn't it I think there's like I, I don't know about you guys but when I go to other gyms now and I see what the kids are taking and I'm talking like 17 this to 19 this is the scariest part for me and I'm just like there's like this kid right <coughs> and he probably won't listen to this and I, I follow him on Instagram and I always check in on him every now and again and he posts a lot of like back shots and I'm just like what are you taking? And he's like nothing. And I'm like dude. Liar. You, the size the, the amount of muscle you've put on at, such a, at such a young age. In like six months do, I'm do, like would I know him? No. Okay. And I'm just like I don't care. 
But the fact that you won't admit it shows me that like, maybe you haven't really considered, like, if I'm now being concerned and being like, just remember, the faster it works, the stronger it is, the more potent it is, the more dangerous it is. So just play that The quicker the ups, forward. the quicker the downs are going to yeah, be. Yeah. Like, I think like, even careful. when we were at, obviously, East Park and um, obviously we had, like, the, the, the few, there the few members, that yeah. went on cycle. I've even had um, bloody, you, if I, you know who, Mm. Uh, 15 years old you know who mm-hmm. um, come to me uh, sent me a message the other day saying I'm going to hop on test I was like you're dumb um, you know do you know what I mean yeah I just feel like I can't even fathom it's bonkers like even now at but my this age is social media that's done yeah, no I know even at my age I'm just like should I I don't know yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm at least waiting until I'm 40 before I do anything like that yeah I think like and that, by, by the way that's next year so and I've, well, been about it. <laughs> and I've been thinking about it for like 10 years and it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, only, it's only now into this point in my life where I'm just like okay that would be something that like I feel m- way more comfortable about but they, it's almost like they just think of it as like I take my vitamin C yeah. I take my creatine and I take my trend it's like well hang on mate, go back yeah. one like, well even Seabum just did an interview I think yesterday or the day before just saying how trend is one thing he doesn't fuck with yeah, I spoke to a friend literally yesterday who's um, also got BPD, and he yeah, said, "What that, can you believe anymore?" But he, even he, my friend, um, he's he's openly enhanced. He, he's a very exceptionally strong dude, one of the strongest benches in the UK. Um, and he was there like, "Yeah, man, just trend sends me into a spiral. I can't do trend." He says, "I just stick with test." It's like ten times stronger or something than testosterone. Uh, more, from like uh, from anabolic androgenic standpoint, it's five times stronger yeah, than right. testosterone, yeah. which is which it's is still a lot. It, bearing in mind how strong there test is, a, is, there is another PD out there which is four times stronger than. Trend, <laughs> they call it yeah. And it, no one uses it because they call it gyno in a bottle. Like no one has been known yeah. to take it for longer than two weeks without getting ma- like really bad gyno. Do you think the sebum thing of him saying I don't fuck with trend is more him just trying to be responsible and say like I won't touch this? Well, to, there's also to ward people. Yeah, off it's a good shout. There, is, I think so. And ultimately, because a lot of people, I don't know what, what he's taking. He's obviously said that he takes less than like 500 tests. But you, whether that's true, you don't know. A lot of mm. people do downplay their cycles. And Josh Bridgman made a really good point saying. Um, and this might contribute to why people do downplay their cycles, is that it's great that so many people are being open about gear now, fantastic. But in doing so, you now have the the negative of that is beforehand when gear was really demonised, no one People would, were scared to touch people it. People were scared of mm. it, but now it's been, so, people are so open, it's fantastic. Oh, well, yeah, it's been yeah. honest drug use. Now it's yeah, so normalised that people are like, oh, he's on gear, everyone's on gear, I can hop on gear as well. It's like, no the conversations come way more casual the it's same like, number of people are still on gear in the professional realm that were always on gear yeah, they yeah, just yeah. talk about it more now that doesn't mean that you should still do it yeah you're still nowhere near needing it it's almost like, yeah like you said it's just such a casual like yeah I'm going to do a couple more years and then I'll probably jump on my first cycle and it's just like okay we spoke about it before in the episode where we just said I think you need to earn the right to yeah, do yeah. that was what we did in yeah. our, that, f- that episode, episode all about drugs that we that spoke about it was a good episode so do go back and listen to a previous episode which was I can't, it was called stronger things i believe that episode so you're right um, yes and it was all about the dark side of drugs and so on and us being as open as we could about all the all the different ups and downs and mainly downs of mm. of that kind of stuff um but yeah so let's not go back there i guess yeah it's not just yet anyway but yeah it's just it, i think it ultimately that you see how many people are unfortunately dying in the industry and you have to identify but, but no one's gonna no one no one's gonna learn from it well that's the thing you have to identify i always say to people if you want to go down that route are you willing to essentially potentially give up your life for this and mm. it's probably a no and in which case yeah. no then probably shouldn't do it yeah but ultimately they still need to look good before they go away so that's yeah. the problem well that, that's everyone why looks, everyone looks the same in the coffin that's, that's gonna that's, that's true that's actually. gonna lead us on to one of our subjects for today actually we're gonna talk about goal setting yeah. and and that sort of vibe but we'll be hitting that in the episode shortly yeah um before we move on um is there anything else you want to cover before we go into the episode oh you mentioned an air fryer last week i can't believe you're part of that i don't own one i would like to i, own would, one. I would i would recommend also i don't own okay, one. I moving stop. on yeah <laughs> that's good <laughs> that's the, to clarify so get one you're welcome okay do you have one yeah obviously obviously not mine is. but i thought that if you had an air fryer that was the only thing you were allowed to talk about because that's seemingly they're like it's like the new vegan if you've got an air fryer <laughs> they do bang to be honest they are good but I don't really use my oven because I feel like yeah. it's such a waste just to heat a whole box just for like a chicken breast I think I li- I've used my oven twice since living in this house since it, and I moved in the beginning of January do you know what interesting interesting mm. chicken cooking fact is I don't use the oven I use the grill to cook my chicken oh, I don't like it it's just 
No, but we have your chicken medium rare. No, no. Jesus. So what, the way no, you cook no, it no, 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 no. is you get your chick, get the chicken breast and you you slice, slap it, like oh, lines okay, into yeah. it like a Hasselback potato, yeah, if you yeah. will, and then you put all your spices on it in, in between the grooves and everything, all and your then spices. and then you just bung it under the grill for like eighteen minutes and it cooks it perfectly, and then you have all the juices that it sits in, and it doesn't dry out. You drink or, them. or the other option. I don't know why we've gone into cooking chat. Is get a frying pan with a lid, and cook your chicken. Like cut it up into pieces, mm. put your spices on it, cook it in your frying pan with a lid, because then none of the juices escape, and it uh, like almost steam cooks. They did it, it, almost steam it with the juices. Steams at the same time. You get the ultimate in moist chicken. I hate, moist. I hate, moist. I hate I'm sorry. I'm really sorry to use oh, that. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> Stop TikTok. the juices from escaping to keep it moist. Absolutely. Oh, I, hate it. I mean, who oh, doesn't want to do that? <laughs> I saw a TikTok video of um, oh, how to home barbecue your chicken. <laughs> Some guy turns on his like gas hob and just chucks a chicken breast on top of it <laughs> and just burns it and then flips over. He's like, home barbecue is really good. They just covered in raw chicken <laughs> and he's just, he just battered. I was like, that's a good idea, those. <laughs> we are in barbecue season. I don't know if you go in for that or not. I'm not a massive barbecue I mean, it's lover. It's shitting down with rain at the moment. Dude. Look how great it is out there. It's pretty great. We have had some good weather. Yeah. I've been, it's been in, humid. I've been in the paddling pool. I've got a paddling pool in the back garden. Do. Of course you do. I've been in AC, so I don't really. I've been in nowhere. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> good. I've been in distress. To clarify, I haven't. Is anyone on threads? Yeah, I got. Th- we, we we follow each other. Yeah, so you oh good. Me, yeah, yeah yes. Yeah, well, it's like you better fucking follow me. Obviously, I did. You. I know. need to follow you guys. I haven't. Yeah, used you it do. Yet. You asshole. I haven't used it yet. I yeah, I don't use it either. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm using it just because I, I kind of like having a nice new place to vent my stream of consciousness that kind of my yeah. spaced out brain comes up with, and I've been using it for my clients as well, and kind of. But I've noticed that at the moment. Every, all the major brands are just trying to come across as being cool on there. Yeah. Oh, let's all let's all chat with Aldi and come up with oh no, let that's Channel Four messaging ITV isn't this oh, hilarious? Yeah. Please tell me you've seen Ryanair's TikTok. Whoever's in charge of Ryanair's TikTok, I've heard their it's Twitter's very good. been good for it's ages as well. Really their art. Twitter's good because they just oh. basically reply to people that complain, yeah. don't they? And they, they go away. They just they it's like. <laughs> It's they got memes of um just like <laughs> people memes. who complain about having to pay for the Windows. toilets on the on the on the plane. It's just they just meme the shit out of their own customers. Yeah. It's heavily. Lotus were also really good. Lotus had a really good TikTok. Lotus yeah. as in the car company. Yeah, they have a really good TikTok. That's surprising. Yeah, it's just they had some young guy. Oh my, there's a cat. I love it. Oh my god, that's not oh a cat. That is a you. lion. Oh, okay, don't worry about. Oh, maybe not. Hang on. Oh, that's Let really sweet. Get, get. What's what's much? The cat heard your uh, your story earlier about yeah, feeding steaks. Oh, that's actually a really cute cat. What's its name? So this isn't Chris's cat. Yeah, this is <laughs> hello. Chris puts on his uh, Instagram all the time. I do not own a cat, and yet this cat is just. I think it's really cute though. It's so lovely. Cosy Katie. Uh, every time we see a cat in distress, she's like, "Oh, there's a cat that needs a home." I'm like, "Yeah, okay, we got one." So um, this I'm trying is to smudge. Oh, that's actually really. Oh, oh, I, does smudge. I like. I like. No, just looking me right in the eye, right in the soul. That's smudge actually a really sweet cat. Where's so smudge she's with? not my cat. She's next door neighbour's cat, on that side, and she basically just comes in. Do you feed her? She's. Um, we give her some treats. Nah, Creamies. Nah. Oh yeah. But oh, when they go, when the like neighbours, when the neighbours go on holiday, that we feed her. Why is she so chilled right now? She. Oh, she has. Re- I like the nose. I think she's just. Um, camera just performing yeah, she's really, really. Good on camera so yeah so if you're listening on Spotify you're going to need to go on YouTube if you want to see yes. cat content on the podcast that, that's the best we cat yeah she's she's like just about and just over one year old now oh a little baby, oh, baby. Um, but yeah it's, this has really kind of disrupted the episode go that's on, fine I don't mind <laughs> Nearly a flat. So good on the landing, though. <laughs> just hey, not, yeah, to not, work on that well, one. Yeah, mate. Room for improvement. Need a coach. Yeah. It's like a raccoon. There you go. She's gone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she she likes to come and sleep under the sofa you're sat on, basically. So, so do I, too. That was good. Nice little brief uh, animal interlude there. We don't normally get that. We haven't done the intro yet. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, there so you go. Perfect timing. Shall we? Shall we launch into the show now? Shall. Then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fine. We shall. Like reading the news, you just need to start shuffling paper. Oh, yes, it's uh, episode 20. This is Pump Fiction. I'm Christy Fellows. He's Michael Carter and he's Harry Moore. Hello. And we're back. And I I still feel like I like having the formal intro. 
Yeah, yeah, no. I like I it. I hate the awkwardness of... If I sat Same with the outro as well. I sit there just thinking, well, I've got to pretend I'm not feeling uncomfortable when I am. I like the fact that when you watch the news, when the, when the, they finish reading the news, they all do different things. A lot of them will shuffle the papers. Some of them will ask teenagers for inappropriate photos. Yes, <laughs> that's good. Very topical. That's good. I like it. See what I did um, sometimes they, <laughs> they take, put, put the glass, they polish the glasses maybe. They write something down. Sometimes I bet they li- make they're a few notes. Yeah. You know, someone's drawn a penis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pick up milk. <laughs> Look at the size of that one. There, there you go. Anyway, um, so yeah, episode twenty. Can't believe we've made it this far, Can't guys. It's not butter. Um, but oh, interestingly, I've noticed the YouTube is picking up. Oh, pretty happy about that. It's getting it's almost similar, the same amount of listens as the Spotify now. Oh, well, that's views. good. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? So that's good. So you need to keep promoting that to your. You yeah, know, I need to start doing more about that. I don't know. Yeah, you could do. You could definitely do some more work. Oh. Um, but oh. yeah, thank you for tuning in once again. Uh, we're back in my studio, which seems to be a much better home for us. I don't mm. know if you agree. There's a cat, so yes. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. the chance of a cat appearing, uh, which is you know worth being here for that very reason alone. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, today's episode subjects we're going to try and get back to our routine of having a couple of yes decent subjects to talk about we had a little band meeting before and it was decided between myself and mike mainly that we were going to talk about metabolism today yes and also i also wanted to talk about goal setting because i don't set any i read a tweet the other day that kind of rattled me a little bit which was a thread though didn't read a thread wasn't a thread because evidently threads are still a a pleasant place at the moment it's a shame isn't it mm. well, it'll soon give it, give it time it'll soon be dragged into the mire like mm. Twitter was well Elon's beefing Zuckerberg over isn't he he's suing them well apparently lots of ex-employees went over and then yeah, they're yeah. like you stole insider secrets and it's how how, how can you it's, it's, it's it. the most basic of things Charles, you've literally got just a text message I was going to say surely the old Facebook status is like hi guys I did it first <laughs> I miss I miss Facebook when it would be the status would be your name and then is yeah. Dot, yeah. Dot, dot. And Harry then you fin- is yeah. having a flaccid. poo. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> You're seriously pooing. <laughs> Pulling in a crossway. But anyway, in um, a crossway. I, I love that cross. I've got, got a poo in <laughs> straight away. Good, good. Straight back in the toilet. It wasn't even me this time. Just want to throw that. Do you want me to just go next door and flush the toilet so we can have that sound effect yeah. playing as the intro instead? That's a really good idea. Have it at the, in the outro. We, you can maybe take a microphone in there with you and do your. No, thought. we don't. We don't want that. <laughs> Harry's thought of the day whilst sat. No? I feel I feel abused. Yeah, okay. Well, you, you always bring it to the party at the end of the day. Anyway, how have you two been since the last two? It's been two weeks, which is probably the shortest time we've had between podcasts for ages. Mm. I'm still here. Sleepy. Sleepy? Why are you sleepy? Because yeah. it's hot. It's really hot and humid. Hu- it's the humidity. I don't I mind. I it. I think it, that's the worst thing. When it's, when it's hot, but you don't get any clear sunshine, mm. and you just get clouds, that's the worst. You say that the... Uh, <laughs> the old person thing of it just needs to rain it we does need, we need a good rain and it will right. just settle I found myself walking into my garden putting my hands on my hips looking up and going mm, we need some rain we need some rain just looking staring, at, crops, just staring at, crops. at the crops yeah. Yeah. yeah literally it's like mm. steak in the grass Every time there's an old TikTok like um, dads whenever it rains it's just some a, a, a dude runs out and goes it's raining it's just pissing out of rain <laughs> there is a certain a, smell about rain when it's yeah, fresh I, I rain I know it's coming my cats tell me because when it's they lie when down there's a little bit of drizzle I hear a crash and they've come bolting through the cat flap, aggressively headbutting it, screaming. I'm like, oh, it must be raining then. <laughs> and well, then there's the, a rat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we had a mouse the other day. We've had a rat, a bird and a mouse now. You're just trying to build your own animals of Farthingwood storyline. I'm trying to make an arc. Let's say, yeah, uh, with the rain that's here, it seems quite apt. My old cat brought in a snake once. Mm. Grass snake. That's good. I've never seen a snake in this country. I've seen... Other than maybe dead on the road, but I've, I've not seen... I've seen two live grass snakes in my life. Congrats, man. One of them was sunbathing. Just I, I rode over one with a bike once. It got, went and spoke. Brilliant. <coughs> and I Horrible. came off the bike. Reporting you. My uh, next door neighbour's... <laughs> Peter. My next door neighbour's dog was bitten by an adder. Oh. Well, it was pretty, pretty mad, isn't it? The only venomous yeah. snake in the, uh, in the year. Very rare. It's yeah. not good. No, I don't know how survived. we survived. So basically, don't go outside. It's raining and there's dangerous animals. Oh, snake barely. chat. The most dangerous animal I have at the moment is a mosquito that gets biting me. And every time I hear it when I'm sleeping, I'm like, mm, I don't know where you are, but I can smell I you. I don't open windows at night for that reason. Hey, if they just exist. They just appear. If They're I, just little... I, I, I don't want to use the C word, but mosquitoes are yeah. literally that. My uh, cabaret in a slug the other day. I was sat on the sofa. I was like, I looked down. I was like, "There's a trail." That's all, grim, man. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then I looked up, and there was a, a slug. They're quite over. poisonous, aren't they? Or like for cats? Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they're kind of nasty. I think for people in general, if you eat a slug, it's probably a bad time. 
Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit of a low point in your life. I think if anyone le- if anyone's eaten the slug in their time, please let us let know. us know how you are. Um, I do actually have some Q and A stuff that I think maybe we'll finish on later. Yes, yeah, um, because people have actually started filling in the form again after we made it clear that Thank that you. was a good thing to do. Please, thanks. Um, but yeah, so for Q and A and topics and random confessions, do head over to our Instagram, which is Pump Fiction Pod. Correct. Pump Fiction Pod. Pop, ping, pop. Um, but yeah, so shall we, shall we just crack on and chat about some things? Let's talk yeah. about mm, I know something. Metabolism. And the reason that I want to talk about metabolism is because Mike posted something on his story and I was just like, we should talk about metabolism because it seems to be like there's always been misconceptions about it. A bunch of shit. A bunch of shit about metabolism. <laughs> and we're here to break down those barriers between you and the shit. And the shit. Um, Bring you in the shit Michael, together. do you want to lead... I should really get it. Oh. Yeah, that would work. The Did thing you see it, Harry? What I posted? Maybe. I see a lot of things. Whether he remembered it's another thing. Yes, that's I see all. see a lot of things. Interestingly, um, for the viewers, it's nice to see Mike unleashing the, the hair today. You know what it was? It's it because like you, men- you mentioned it and then I was like, I am quite warm. You are looking more and more like... A gazelle. M- mankind from wrestling fame every time oh, I see yeah, you. Classic. I feel like that's not a compliment. Because <laughs> yeah, have you seen... Have you, <laughs> Yeah. You do a really I think, soft I think, thing. Are you on about the physique? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah. That's what that's I thought what you I were going to do. I was like, cheers then. Sorry, this is not very He's looking like a lion in mating season. That's nice. I'm I'm fertile. Sure. It was this one. Uh, Read it to the cloud. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the post that I saw said that there is no relationship between RMR and weight loss. So RMR is not a predictive predictor of weight loss people with slow metabolisms do not lose weight any slower or faster than people with fast metabolisms total daily de- daily expenditure activity neat food intake are what really matters right? Break, break, break that down literally please. calories in versus calories out literally be in a deficit to lose weight well there was like i still hear it now actually in, when i'm in the gym it, people just say oh, i've just got a really slow metabolism eat less than and actually you look at the research and and how much the metabolism adjusts like kind of when it comes to anything that whether it's your food whether it's your activity whether it's your whether you've got a disease or something that affects your metabolism like it's not a lot no not at all uh, one of the biggest indication or like things that alters metabolism is height yeah like if you're really tall you're big probably, dudes gonna have better metabolisms yeah basically if you're tall more of you, yeah. yeah there's more of you um yeah. it's quite like a substantial amount as well like height yeah. is really like everyone's like oh, muscle yeah it's actually quite a big thing what so it? not so much the size of the like the person but the height saw, of the person i saw some doctor speak about this he said obviously like x amount of muscle mass increases your metabolism by nowhere near as much as it's you like, think it's like 20 calories per something or there's, there's like like quite a, a significant yeah, there's amount like of muscle mass but also fat increases it by like something like five to seven yes. which is also like it's any type of mass everyone's like entire oh, tissue yeah any type that's the thing mm. is essentially fat and muscle both increase your metabolism obviously muscle by i think it's about three times more but to get a significant change in meta- metabolism or metabolic rate from muscle you need a lot of muscle and the muscle doesn't actually change your metabolism Stout. as much as you think like you put 100 pounds of muscle you're probably going to increase your metabolic rate by a good chunk but 100 pounds of muscle is probably more than most people will ever put on in their life yeah well, obviously yeah um the other, one of the other things as well is um is how much the metabolism actually adapts to activity so for example <coughs> does something always have um I've always put to bed in, in, in the gym is people are like, right, if I want to lose weight, I just need to do lots of cardio, don't I? Mm. And then it's like, well, oh, no. That's the worst. The people that refuse to lift weights before yeah. they've lost a bit of, they, before they've done some cardio. Lift weights, walk more and eat less. Exactly. You're and, fine. And they, they do lots of cardio. And then the best way to explain to them is like a car on the motorway. Yeah, yeah. So if you drive lots of short journeys and you drive around just revving it up, yes, you'll use lots of fuel. So once you start doing longer runs your body becomes way more efficient with fuel mm. because that's from an evolutionary standpoint that's what we've learned it's metabolic like, adaptation yeah. to a sense everyone yeah which is another term people use incorrectly yeah and like because they did a study uh, i don't know where it was i think we talked about it before actually about a tribe um, yes. somewhere in the amazon yeah, and yeah. they thought like oh, these people run everywhere they have to carry everything everywhere like, they must burn loads of calories and they actually only burnt like another two or three hundred calories more than the average american yeah, yeah. and they're like how they go everywhere on foot and it's because their metabolism is adjusted based on the amount of activity they do they do loads of activity yeah. but the metabolism has come right down well the body is horrendously efficient so if i say eat four maryland cookies in your seconds wouldn't even feel that that's two, that's over 200 calories to burn 200 calories from running you've got to run 
Yeah. Like, over Believe a mile. Believe me, I know. Yeah, do you know It's quite a distance to burn, uh, like, 200 calories from running when you think about how little food that actually is. You're like, I can eat four marinara cookies in 10 seconds. And the more you do that run, the less calories you'll burn over time because you'll just get more efficient at it. Well, that's where the adaptation really comes in. Everyone has this idea of, like, metabolic adaptation. Oh, if I'm in deficit, I'm going to damage my metabolism and suddenly I'm going to be stuck on a thousand calories for life. So probably, probably not, to be honest. Mm. Probably not. The adaptation occurs when your body essentially adjusts and adapts to become more efficient not because you're in a deficit for a long period of time if you gain weight it'll adapt it'll, if you lose weight it'll mm. adapt it's any change will cause yeah, adaptation yeah. when I've um, historically dieted for bodybuilding comps or photo shoots over the years the most noti- <coughs> noticeable thing for me is it the longer I do it, the harder it becomes. Yeah, always, yeah. Because yeah. so, your, your body's trying to get more efficient. And, and ultimately, I'll have to... So I'll have to increase my cardio or I'll have to drop the food. But the fitter I get doing more cardio, again, the, har- the harder... Mm. The, it means the harder it is to get my heart rate up. Yeah. So therefore, I'm burning less calories because I'm now fitter. Mm. And therefore, I have to reduce the food more. And it's just this ongoing battle of adjustment. But ultimately in order to keep things moving in the right direction one of those has to give yeah do you know, I actually saw a really interesting post um, a guy called TNF which is a dude that's very clued up in the old nutrition side of things made a really um, kind of controversial post about PCOS and like thyroid issues and uh, weight loss he said ultimately like these medical issues a lot of people say I can't lose weight because of my thyroid issue with PCOS it's like they actually don't make it any harder to lose weight from a metabolic standpoint really they make it hard to lose weight from a hunger standpoint because you eat more mm. you, you still the same principles apply of you have a maintenance you need to be in a deficit it's just harder to get to that deficit because you are hungrier mm. not because your body's not allowing you to but because yeah. you just feel hungrier or that, so, things like that so he said so he did a thing I think he linked a study again I may be misquoting it, I'm, so don't quote me on this it's just what I recall it was a few months ago I'll try and find the video it's a really good one he basically said actually these medical issues don't really make that much of a difference for weight loss in regards to a like I said, met- metabolic, uh, metabolic standpoint. It's more just uh, it's harder because you're probably a bit hungrier, which it's means a, it's going to be harder. Yeah, and it's the same with anything where like it saps you for energy. It's like yeah. the, the same tenants still apply to you, but because yeah. you don't move as much because you've got lower energy, yeah, yeah. you don't burn, your need is lower and so, therefore... Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's harder because you have to try harder and do more, or not even do more, try harder and have to push yourself harder to yeah. achieve the same thing but from a, takes more from a number standpoint yeah, yeah. it's actually not massively different for me personally I've kind of feel like I have to if I want to lose body fat I have to embrace the hunger yeah like you speak mm-hmm. to some people who say oh just just eat when you're like if you want to like be healthy just eat when you're hungry well that's not necessarily always a good signal that you should eat intuitive eating is hard skill yeah uh, I, I've kind of got good at it, but equally yeah. I understand that my hunger isn't a sign that I need to eat because I know full well that I ate like an hour ago, let's yeah. say, and I know what exactly what I ate mm. and I know that that's absolutely fine to sustain me for another hour on top of that. So just because I'm hungry now, I almost, I almost take it as a good sign that the hunger is a sign that I probably am going to like burn some fat. And I know that's yeah. basic, but for me that works. <coughs> I think... Another thing I can almost attest to to the thyroid thing is I have a apparently a diagnosed like thyroid issue, which means I, I can't remember if it's under or I've never I always mix them up. But in theory, I should gain weight really easily. I don't. I'm in underactive. Then. Yeah, I think I am. Yeah. I'm currently eating. I mean, when I'm in a massing phase, upwards of five thousand calories. In theory, if I my thyroid issue really had that much of an impact on my metabolism, I should be through the roof of body weight. I'm not. Mm. Um, so. Even when I go to the doctor saying, oh, you should be gaining weight really, quick, really quickly, this further enforces that actually it doesn't really change the metabolic rate drastically at all. It's more just, I might find it, I yeah. might get hungrier sort of thing. And that's another problem when you go to, and this is no disrespect to like GPs and stuff because they do a great job, but they are like, <laughs> they're like master generalists. And they're great for go, the general population. Yeah, and it's like they then also treat their patients because that's how they've been taught and that's fine based on means and averages and a lot of these means and averages aren't actual people let's talk about bmi <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're like yeah, bmi yeah. is a tricky one because i think from like a health standpoint i think it has some merit if you have loads of muscle mass and your bmi means you're obese regardless that's actually not healthy to have that much yeah, yeah. mass and to carry from a from a whether you're overweight from a fat perspective maybe not so accurate but from a health perspective i think bmi has, has its merits because if you have someone with bmi is 40 and they're five percent body fat with pure mass i guarantee their heart is struggling yeah that's a good shout that's um, like like the the spectrum of health yeah. it's like in the middle you've got like the optimization of health which is yeah. like you move a lot 
you eat well and then actually the extremes which are unhealthy are inactivity and then performance so also yeah, yeah. another extreme yeah. which kind of your bodybuilding falls into that in but in a way the funny thing about bodybuilding is a lot like a lot of bodybuilders are not healthy at all well, most bodybuilders are unhealthy yeah, yeah. because ultimately um like they go from one extreme to another so when they're dieting they're not healthy because they're trying to push themselves to have a level of body fat that isn't healthy and then when they're trying to build build muscle they refuse to do any like cardio activity or even even when they're dieting they try and do as little cardio as possible but ultimately so therefore the fitness is terrible so you're giving your frame your body this additional muscle to to basically pump blood through and your body to sustain mm -hmm but you're refusing to be fit and mm -hmm. healthy at the same time. Do you yeah. not think that there's a question to be raised there? Now, obviously, I've done years of that sort of thing, but only now that I've got a bit older, I've acknowledged the fact that it's no good me just looking good. I need to feel good mm -hmm. and yeah, my yeah. body to perform in all aspects, which is why the running thing has been so good for me. And I, this, the crazy thing <coughs> about that is when I got into <coughs> running last year, I assumed that, I would change shape and I would yeah, yeah. lose a lot of size and it would be noticeable. It hasn't at all. No. no. And so therefore, I ran a 10K race in London on Sunday and I ran it really well and I broke, added, I took ten, I took a minute off my PB from last year, which I was really happy with. That's good. Congrats. But um, the day before I'd eaten a shitload of food and I felt really pumped. Yeah, yeah. Which was not good for the which was not no. good for my run at all. And I think I could have done it quicker had I not been at Silverstone all day consuming my body weight. Um but equally it shows me that I can be a kind of juicy looking bodybuilder type, but I can still do that stuff as yeah. well. Well everyone has this I've got a few points to bring up, but everyone has this misconception that oh, running means you'll lose your muscle mass. So no, you probably have to eat a bit more. That's yeah, legit. You're yeah, expending yeah. more calories. It's given, it's, given, eat more. it's given me a massive freedom to well, eat. Good for eat you. Because you've got a massive appetite. You and love like, their food. And like we said, like, and the more you run, and the fitter you get, the less calories you'll burn when you yeah. run anyway. So the other thing, another thing that everyone has this misconception of that everyone's like, oh, I don't want to, don't do weights for fat loss because obviously I want to burn calories. So like, do you not think movement in general burns calories? Like doing weights is not yeah. going to burn calories. It's like, such a basic thing to say, though. That, are you moving? Yes. But like. Have you mm. not the the people that haven't figured out that lifting weights obviously will burn more calories than cardio, because ultimately the cardio you're you're only really burning calories with your elevated heart rate, whereas with the weight lifting you're burning calories because your body has to repair itself. And the progressive yeah progressive overload of lifting weights like there's so much more to that, whereas progressive overload of running you get fitter. Correct. So and the other thing is like yeah. when you kind of. If you look at the immediate, like from a short term perspective, in an hour of running versus an hour of weight training, you'll probably burn more calories in that hour doing the cardio. But then you look at what's afterwards, like you said, repairing, then also adaptation when you build muscle, where you gain muscle mass over a course of whatever, mm -hmm. you then burn more calories at rest, which then in turn you're technically burning more calories in the long run. So I always say, I always say to people, if I had to choose one cardio or weights for long term fat loss, I'd always choose weights. Mm. Like always. But then for long term health, I choose. For long term, health, I'd say both. Ideally, to well, be honest. Well, of course. No, I mean, in, an yeah. in an ideal world, I'd be so, like, even when programming um, training plans for people who are trying to gain size, I'd still put some cardio in there. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, again, I neglected myself, but I understand the digestive benefits behind it. I mm. understand the heart health benefits behind it. Just even just going for. So, um, I, I try yeah. walking a lot more now. I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, you have to do intense cardio, but Many just times, like uh, the simple, the simple stuff. Just being, go for a walk, track your steps every day, and just do something. And it's an energy system. At the end of the day, you need to underpin all your energy systems with the others, and there's yeah. three of them. Only strong and is your weakest link. Exactly. It's so true. Just try and so, be a bit of everything. Do you know what eggs me on though? Go on. Reverse dieting. Hear me out. I think I saw this. I'm Explain not gonna, it first. I'm not gonna, so reverse dieting is essentially the, the concept behind going into a deficit phase, being in deficit for however long. If the classic is a bodybuilder. And then bit. rebuilding it really yeah. slowly back to maintenance. Fuck that. Just get into it. Literally, like for n most people, if not all people, why would you not just go, if your deficit is done, you no longer want to lose. Why would you not go back to maintenance 
as quickly as possible. Yeah, you want to saw, get some, out of that phase. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. otherwise, I never are, understood that. People are on reverse dieting. I've lost an extra three pounds. Like, yeah, but your deficit's done. It's all one good. You're losing extra three pounds, but you've already competed. Yeah, you're not being judged now. You're being a. a I willing. think I think a lot of people had this idea that if you didn't reverse diet and you suddenly started chucking in a load of food again, you're going to batter your metabolism. Not going to happen. Somehow. Not no. gonna, if you dam- to, to damage your metabolism, it, it's. I don't know. I've never met anyone who's actually damaged their metabolism. Well, not, not beyond repair. Yeah, I think it's yeah. exceptionally hard to yeah. do. Fortunately, it's because more adaptation I, than yeah, damage. exactly. Because yeah. I always worked with Ryan, who loves his food just as much as I do. When we'd finish a comp or a shoot, or whatever, he'd just say to me, "Just crack on, mate. Don't worry about it." Yeah. But you I get a coach that says, "Oh no, we're going to reverse diet you now. So we're just going to, you know, how we had you on a re- on really fucking low calories. You're we're just going to increase that. Calories. We're just going to increase that by fifty fifty a week. Fuck off. Just get on with it. There's two really scenarios I think it might be useful. Yeah, yeah. Potentially is disordered eating 100% uh, but that's a, that's a different Roman which was diet. a different thing yeah, different chat I, I, I would agree like, yeah, I would different, agree different chat I would agree and potentially depending on the well, I guess it's kind of the similar thing really but the psychological kind of benefits on the client of because there is a bit of a, a small rebound effect well, obviously you're, go, you're going to go into maintenance you're going to gain some yeah. weight it doesn't mean you, you're not a maintenance it means your water weight but then it's arms. almost like you're kind of just kicking the can down the road really because they are going to put on some weight once they go yeah. back into maintenance anyway but weight isn't always bad weight no, could no, literally of just be you're increasing your carbon take therefore you're probably holding more water restoring yeah, yeah. glycogen levels yeah, yes, sir. 100% preaching yeah. to the choir here but yeah, yeah. when Susan Susan. Sorry, Susan. We always pick on a Susan. Don't yeah, we, we do. I'm really sorry. 50 years Susan. old, yo yo dieted her whole life, grew yeah. up with Atkins, Weight Watch, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of client buying, sometimes. How many sins is it? Can yeah. I, how many sins is it? Can I have it? Yeah. yeah. And they're like, yeah, well, she'll see the scale weight go up and suddenly, like, my life is over. Yeah. And even though you say it That's to them. That's a disorder in itself. Yeah. And they go, yes, I understand. They're like, just so you know, I weighed myself and I was more today. And it's like, have you had a poo yet? Yeah, no. Literally, you've gone to okay. toilet. Or <laughs> you always bringing it back water. to that, aren't you? Yeah. It's always, am, it's always about the poo. There's, there's an influence. <laughs> but no, I completely agree with everything you said, 100%. There's an influence, so I'm not going to say the name. Should I say no? Mouth it. Nah. Right. Um, I've, 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 I've done a video. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know who it was anyway. Yeah, so. no, I've done a video on before, but she did, sold an, I think she sold an ebook or a course. Uh, a course on reverse dieting. Oh, and she I think it, I know who this is. Yeah, and she made, I think she sold, a, I think I want to say it was hundreds American? if not, maybe, yeah, yeah, hundreds if not thousands of Come dollars. On, just say the fucking name, it doesn't matter. I pre- again, allegedly, Misfit and Nerdy. Yes. Yeah, yeah I did yeah. a video on her. Um, and I was thinking, first of all, what a cheeky little snake trying to basically make a lot of money from your audience who believe in reverse dieting for most people is more complex than go to maintenance. Um, but she, I think she probably would have made a fair chunk of money. But I was like, and I, I in the video I said I'll do, I'll give you a course on reverse dieting right now for free. Go to maintenance as quickly as possible. You're welcome. And then everyone's like, no, you could buy the course. I'm like, please don't. That's what I mean. I'm going to give you a course on how to eat sleep. what your body needs. Yeah, sleep, breathe, just go be- go to bed, <laughs> in and out. Yeah, literally, it's just like it. It doesn't need to be that complex. It's just uh, go to maintenance. If you've gone through a long phase of cutting in in a deficit then the, there's a large part of me just thinks, well, your body's crying out for refueling. So it's really not a bad thing just to put, yeah. put a bit more in than it needs because... And get yourself back to that level so you can get it. the next bit of work done. Because the thing is, everyone's like, oh, I, I feel really lean. I feel really healthy. It's like, what do your, what do your bloods look like? Yeah. I literally spoke to a guy at the gym today. penis works still? Yeah, literally, I spoke to a guy at the gym today. Are you having a period? He, he came up to me yeah. and goes, like, I'm not going to say his name. Great guy. Love him. He's a good dude. He came up to me. He's like, Harry, can I talk to you about my nutrition? I said, what's up? He goes, yes, I've been in a really aggressive, aggressive deficit for I think like I think he's like 12 weeks or something because yeah, I'm on about like 1400 calories at the moment he's weighs 75 kilos he's 22 years old yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll say like for, for 12, 11 12 weeks that's a long time to be on that low calories he goes yeah man I just feel really bad I looked at my fat intake I, I ate 12 grams of fat a day I was like Bruh. I was Jeez. like I said how's your willy looking Probably yeah. not very functional, is he? he? Goes ah, no, I don't really have a sex drive. I said, like, yeah, you're 22 years old. That needs to change. So yeah, I can, dude, I can that's attest. Low, man. Yeah. I can attest to that because obviously, where I've had to get super lean for competitions mm. over the years, I've probably done similar. Yeah, well, yeah and I can to. vouch for the fact that you're when you're dieting, your sex drive is shit. Even yeah. Josh Bridgman spoke about it's when so he, when he's though. in prep on enhancements, trend test, all the things you think, oh, my willy's going to be through the roof. He said for si- from six doesn't weeks doesn't stop that working, by the way. You just don't necessarily want no, to do it all no, the time. No, but, but he just said like, he just like, he, he was there like, he's <laughs> just like a cartoon. <laughs> he, he, I think he made a comment. He's like, yeah, I, for six weeks out, he goes, I couldn't even have a wank if I tried. And I used to say like, that sounds, yeah. see, I've never like, hit that level. And I'll say like, and he's on all sorts. And <laughs> I, I, I may be misquoting, but he said something along those lines. I'll say like, I said to this guy, I said, look, 
why are you still in the depth say oh I want to get rid of that last bit of pouch he goes I was like I could see you're looking gaunt I said like, that last pouch will come off when you step on stage you're not stepping on stage for many years yeah so I said go back to maintenance go into a slight surplus I think you need to worry that if you're feeling this concerned about how you're looking and everything now when you don't have a lot of mass is this not becoming disordered now and he goes oh, yeah I mean I, I, I saw someone post to the day she did her first show I actually think I muted her stories because I found it a little bit I've done that a few bit times. triggering I just found it like it's a difficult watch because I could tell from you know she, she worked really hard and you know she, she definitely lost size and like weight but I think she had a lot of muscle mass so she just got really thin and then yeah. she was like yeah I'm going to take a break now because I just don't want to have a bad relationship with food very responsible but I was very, like, you've yeah. done one amateur show and that's already becoming a very apparent thing yeah. so I just feel like a lot of people get into the sport without really thinking about the psychological side I of it I think ultimately it also depends on who's guided you through that process True. because yeah. some people will decide they want to do like bikini fitness or whatever so it's it's more common with the girls I think because guys that do f the bodybuilding and the men's physique stuff understand that okay I need to be a certain size before there's any point mm -hmm. in me doing this whereas a lot of the girls that do the fitness side of those competitions that my wife's historically done she didn't start doing those until like she'd been lifting weights and going to the gym for like over a decade at this yeah, point yeah. she'd built a good uh, base of muscle she had a frame there and then the minute she got the meat the reason why she won her first ever competition was because all we really had to do was strip away the fat that was covering years of hard work yeah Whereas you get these young girls now that get into it, and thankfully most of them do it naturally. Well, a lot of them do, not so much anymore. But because they haven't been lifting weights very long, yeah, they don't have the dense. They muscle, don't really yeah. have. They don't really have the muscle. So, well, so they just a lot of people. And I was guilty of it as well when I first got into bodybuilding and I got a coach. I was like looking at like covers of Men's Health and what have you, thinking mm. I can't wait to look like this in six, six months' time, yeah, six weeks, or even six <laughs> weeks, because I thought in my mind that just by signing up for the process, I was going to get that shape at the same time when no I wasn't because the minute I started the process I was straight away obviously going into a calorie deficit mm. and yes you can still if you're st if you're pretty new to it yes you can build a little bit of muscle in a deficit if you're very very new to it but ultimately that stops pretty quick so therefore all I really did was just reveal what muscle I'd built mm. in my lifetime and for most of us who have just started out that's not a lot no, so you get because the training's not optimal at that point. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not perfect. So you for get you, is you, it? So. you get these girls that decide they want to do bikini shows, and they're f and they need to get super lean for these competitions. So ultimately, they end up stripping away all that kind of natural body fat, and there's not a lot of muscle there. So yeah, and in order to keep doing that, because they haven't got a lot of muscle, they've got haven't got a lot of fat. Their metabolism, their metabolic rate is like like and, nothing, and you can tell it's gonna, it's not a lot's so, gonna be there. So suddenly you're having to put them on. They're having, they're on like six, seven hundred calories because that's what their coach has put them on. They're yeah. gonna get a bad relationship with food. I think that's the other thing that a few things kind of floated around. I see a lot of people say, "Oh, I went into deficit, got really lean, but I actually lost a lot of muscle mass." It's actually first of all, you, like dudes as well, all genders. I was, you kind of think. Did you actually lose a lot of muscle mass or did you actually just not have a lot of muscle mass to Correct. begin with? Yeah, um, yeah. The other thing is everyone's got this. I, I've had this conversation with a few people before playing. Oh, you should never put someone on less than 1500 calories a day. Categorically, you shouldn't do that. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, actually, no, I think sometimes you actually should. I ha I ha I've had yeah, to. I, I have a client who's on 1500 calories a day because we're doing an aggressive mini cut for a short period of time because you won't lose mus muscle in that period. But what you will do is lose a lot of fat very quickly to mm. essentially go back into a surplus for as long as possible. But even like Mark Lobliner, who's an enhanced bodybuilder when he was competing he's like yeah man i ate 900 calories a day before show because he's like i'm five foot three i don't have a great it's like, how i was yeah, as well yeah, yeah. Like, and like and obviously i think with women it's a bit trickier because obviously you've got a lot more hormonal things to consider yes. but still ultimately is are you losing weight or are you losing fat no then you probably need to do something to either burn more or eat less at the mm. at the peak of anna's competing when we were doing um she went through she did one month where she did four competitions in one month which included arnold classic prague pro yeah, things like that big names british yeah. finals and it's pretty heavy to get to yeah, that yeah, point yeah. but it, by the time we got there period had stopped i'm not surprised and it'll probably mm. take a little while to come back yeah it does same with them um, people a lot of natural guys come out of comp and they say they their sex drive is in the bin a lot of people do can't get a boner for many many weeks afterwards like categorically because their fat intake so low their testosterone's through the 
through the floor so many things but ultimately it's like unfortunately you, you kind of have to eat as how you need to eat for your goals and some for some people olympic athletes don't a lot of a lot of olympic athletes like you know, you know famous people they won't have periods either because ultimately yeah. they've they've got to push themselves to that low body fat to be that the athlete they need to be and unfortunately yeah. you have to make sacrifices to get where you want to be so ask yourself this question are you willing to to make those sacrifices to accept that hunger to push your body if you, to get where you want to be mm. well, are you willing to sacrifice as you said performance sacrifice health for performance well yeah you can't have yeah. both <coughs> so you gotta pick one if you're, if you're thinking about performance as the outcome that you want to then that's that's what it needs to be everything needs to be funneled that way yeah yeah which and health you, needs to be kind of monitored and you want to try and look after it but you're going to have to it's damage control more than yeah, anything yeah. rather than trying to make sure I'm still healthy it's like you're, you're probably not going to be that yeah. healthy because again you could look at these amazing runners online wow they look incredible they look so fit and healthy oh, I haven't had a period for three years that's not yeah. very healthy actually but you perform really well so clearly performance is what they're make they're your choice towards. yeah, yeah. Make, and, we, and all top athletes will make sacrifices to get where they want to be but you have kind of uh, obviously mentioned earlier that you've got to be wary of your relationship with food and your body like this is why a lot of people do go into disordered eating or eating disorders because they sacrifice but again they are sacrificing health and psychological health is going to be an mm. aspect of that so if you do develop a bad relationship with food that is really scary it's really hard to come out of but yeah. that, that is always going to be a risk and for a lot of people i don't think it's worth it as, as it probably shouldn't be worth it no i thought something that was quite interesting is over the like the last decade or so the the average like maga body like yeah, yeah. maga loof is like such a cover yeah. model ready body is what people want i'm like wow like 10 15 years ago that would have been considered like Extreme, champion yeah, yeah. Unreal. Unreal. like and now they're like yeah i want to get down there for to go on the beach for two weeks to drink it's television though geordie shore and all yeah. that stuff but then but then you know you guys know way more than i do like to get to that level the sacrifice physically emotionally socially but that's why your average bro now just takes clen to get lean for a holiday to clarify yeah. clen is we spoke about before is it's not a steroid because it's not hormonal driven but it's a pd it's a performance enhancing drug but it's also exceptionally dangerous like even more place more dates who's like talks about gear openly he goes clen is one of the few things he doesn't touch or wouldn't touch because it's so hard on the heart mm. i've heard so many people just drop it into conversation like, oh when i was at, when i was um just take some clen when i was how old was i probably was 16 or 17 when everyone went to like magalus went to the after yeah, yeah. the gccs i never went but a lot of the group of 30 who some of them had never been to the gym in their life all took clen they just, just think of it as another tablet they and get, i'm like you know yeah. it's crazy and i'm like that, that's like I, I'm obviously even competing I would be scared to take Clen because I've got anxiety anyway could definitely make it worse it's just so hard on the heart it's really it's quite a dangerous thing to, obviously all, all drugs are going to be dangerous I, it's really quite dangerous I've tried it I'm not It's. I'm not surprised when I was much younger and I'll, t- and I'll tell you this is a bomb tell you, show I need an explosion sound and I'll tell you I I have tried it and I had insomnia for like yeah, three but you days feel like shit so. uh, that doesn't work oh, that does not work you can't park here <laughs> I'm not sure Batman works either. Is that the whole film? Is that, that? how you felt? <laughs> Is that how you felt doing it? You're Batman. No, I, I had. You felt like I, shit. Yeah, I felt like shit. I had. I didn't sleep very well, and yeah, my heart rate was elevated all the time, and I was. I felt hot all the time. Obviously, my t- metabolism had gone through the roof at that point. And I'll be honest with you, didn't really touch the sides, didn't really do anything, and I was like, I feel like shit. So because I could feel an effect on me, I think it must be working. Therefore, carry on. But after a while, I was like, it's not really doing anything. So I stopped. I'm pretty sure it does stuff for other people, though. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah, saying it, it can be a very me, effective fat burn, but you have but to use it for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oof, and no, you, you have to weeks. cycle. I think you have to do it in such a way yeah. where you go up and down with it, like you, you can't titrate just it, take sort of thing. A set, like it will no. Well, it, it adapt you. It kind of the post like caffeine. You, 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 you adapt like it. Adapt so you build up tolerance, yeah. we say. Yeah. How have we got onto this kind of? drug talk and we just start talking about i guess that's it i guess that's how metabolism goes for people they just decide oh i need to enhance myself well, i think the segue is because they can't be bothered to do it properly they just then skip the line to moving away from performance side of things what about the misconception that metabolism gets worse the older you get i don't think there's a lot of research supporting that no um, i think again it's largely driven by uh, like essentially tissue you know uh, you all know this because you read a lot of research as well is it's like it's one of those things like is it actually causation correlation like yeah, yeah. with older people they move less and they probably have less muscle less yeah tissue like in general. when you get older because they're less likely especially the generations that are on the earth at the moment that the much older generations they don't do as much weight training so they're not as strong 
they have to overcome gravity like getting in and out of a chair for them is really hard well, the other Whereas, things, yeah, those kind of things is like yeah right again i guess to put in blunt terms is how often do you see someone in their 20s who's obese it's not uncommon it's not uncommon how often do you see someone in their 80s who's obese probably a lot probably a lot rarer do you mean there is always going to be a tissue thing how many often do you see someone in their 20s who's built like a shit house loads of muscle it can happen how often do you see someone in their 80s who's built like a shit house ah don't they ever have no. again a massive difference in tissue and you know <coughs> both my um grandparents have died now but i remember my granddad like when he got much older into his late 80s early 90s he barely ate yeah his, yeah. his, his, his hunger just yeah his appetite just disappeared <coughs> and they, they'd eat like salad maybe and if it was hot they probably wouldn't eat and they probably adapt the body probably metabolic yeah. adaptation probably adapts to the changes exactly i think it just comes down to quite simply move it or lose it and as people get older yeah. they they become they're less naturally active but then like you get people with clients in their like 70s who are still doing spin classes and they're oh, still lifting yeah, weights and, love it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they and they still look the same or they, they still look great obviously their, their skin's a bit thinner so suddenly the muscles pop in a little yeah, bit yeah, elastic happy. as well um but yeah i just feel like to say oh like like for example i'm nearly i'm 40 next year but i feel like I feel like I'm in better shape now than I ever was in my 30s, obviously because I've only, I only started lifting weights in my late 20s, so it's taken me a while to build muscle and what have you. And obviously I've got fitness now and all that sort mm. of stuff. But I don't feel like, like my metabolism is slowing down. No. I'm eating you know, just as much as I ever did. And you're keeping an eye on things. So like you, you're, you probably are adjusting without realising it a yeah. little bit. But also think about it, like even with the older people, when you see them go to the gym like wow that's so amazing it's like they're, they're still an outlier the fact yeah, that they, they yeah. go it's like well why couldn't other old people the same age as them be like them yeah and when you ask choice, them why it? aren't you like that you just like i just guess i never got round to it like yeah. it never was a priority so i didn't go it'll be interesting to see obviously this the generate generations that we have now obviously kids in their 20s now far more focused on the gym than than previous generations ever were who were just interested in going out like when i was in my 20s it wasn't cool to go to the gym it wasn't no. cool to have muscle we all just went out we had big hair and <laughs> we would go out like we'd go out friday saturday we'd go out during the week as well for yeah. the, to the pub like the pubs were more common and so on definitely but you look at younger generations now and all they want to do is hang out at gyms and train and talk and so therefore they they don't want to drink as much alcohol because therefore they're too worried about compromising their gains and what have you so what happens when that generation gets to 40 50 60 uh, is they'll be really interesting to see what people's perception of metabolism is metabolism is around that time and you know, things like general health and disease well, they'll be see, the, be fall, the, the fallout of the drug taking from younger people will be interesting to see the evolution of humans like are we gonna evolve into like kind of a super race of like because you see i don't know if you've seen my you know mike o'hearn yeah yeah have you seen, yeah. Have you seen his baby no, I actually haven't. No. He's had a child, and it was like born with like like horseshoe triceps, and it's like what is there's got to be something in that that if you if you procreate with a, a male and female who both take performance enhancing drugs, surely it's like genetically modified children. Is there not Let's something? Find to, out. Is there not something to I say? Mean, yeah, that I mean, like I don't know really how evolution works. I, mean, I think yeah, evolution like a, takes a long, long normally a it takes lot a long longer, time. To, <laughs> longer <laughs> to occur. But that said because of the rate of science and what we're producing the chemicals and all the synthetic foods, stuff yeah. and foods like who's to say that we don't expedite that process I swear to god like if you look because of what we're putting in I mean I know obviously technology's improved and what have you but you look at like Olympic running times and strength times all these records that get broken year upon year how is how does that continue to happen well it's like when they um the per first person to they always used to say back in the day that no one would run a four minute mile yeah, yeah. And then as soon as someone did it multiple people broke that record the first year it's like the psychological yeah. thing, wasn't it once one person done it that same year loads of people after having never done it before suddenly did it so it's again it's you could question why well there you go also with more people getting into training and stuff is, is the genetic pool of I mean, you, you arguably strengthen the gene pool, but then potentially with then all the other side of things, like all the chemicals or the medicine mm. now that's being taken for various different ailments and struggles, like that cocktail, what will that produce in time? Like we didn't have all of these chemicals and things in our bodies hundreds of years ago. Yeah, so yeah. what's that going to do as well? Yeah. And actually they did it. They've produced like a a baby or like an embryo of th from three people that's like the first time they've done it where they've they put together oh it's going to be really good for thruples oh. yeah 
can you imagine We're a super a, it's gonna be a podcast baby which what? i think's mad who's gonna Why would you want who's that? gonna carry the baby i mean you you i was gonna look at you no nah you no you're the you're the the biggest so therefore you're yeah. the most likely to childbearing <laughs> hips <laughs> refer to me as mother yeah, you can be. Okay. You can be mum. Too bad. <laughs> I hate that. But anyway, I think that's enough metabolism chat. Goal setting. Goal setting. Oh yeah, before we move on to that caffeine, right? Caffeine's an interesting one. So, I've um, been told I'm not allowed to have coffee when I wake up anymore. From okay, my other half. But I, I read it from somewhere else saying that Toilet apparently, apparently. <laughs> I can't. I need to do some research. It's the first hour, right? It's the first ninety minutes. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's a bit exact, but apparently, because you wake up with heightened cortisol, uh, cortisol levels, yeah. that chucking that coffee in there is not going to have any effect, and therefore, it's just going to cause you to crash quicker later on. I, I heard something similar. Of you have to wait like an hour and and have some food before. as well. I mean, sort of yeah. Stuff. I mean, I don't like it when people talk in absolutes. Like it will have no effect. I think that every like, answer in the world is it depends. Yeah. So. It's like, uh, I mean, I'm 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 sticking with it. I'm not having a coffee till probably like nine o'clock now, at least. Not I do nine. feel it more if like I forget to make one for the road when I'm. I when just I'm love the taste the of it. To be no, honest. I do. I like the ritual of it though. I like the smell. I like pressing <sighs> the button, drinking it. Anyway, you don't drink coffee, do you? I've never had coffee in my life. No. You're missing out. Child. No, I'm. I'm a like soft different. palate. Do you I, like raw, <laughs> I raw dog everything. Do you like olives? No. Okay, you're just not there yet. Yeah, no, and also I just I'm your just, palate changes. I'm as too built different know? for caffeine. And olives, apparently. I don't really have any caffeine in well, olives. Do you want me to bring caffeine. some olives now? We'll see if you no. like them yet. No. Maybe we should do that every episode. Do you like an olive yet? Let's no, see. Gonna leave. Gonna what leave. your palate can take today. <laughs> but no, I, I think I'm just too built different for caffeine. Mm. I, I don't no, know. I Plus, I'm used to I, I've spent so many years running on literally all the stems. few hours, that, not even <laughs> like another, like few hours of sleep for so long. Don't I'm, I'm built different. Obviously, now I can actually sleep a bit better, but pff, don't need it anymore. Okay. I lasted a year on that. My, my pre workout like, currently, actually, just a quick thing on that. Has how does pre workout even work for you? You drink so many monster energy well, this drinks. That's the thing. Like, I got, <laughs> got sold. Speed. Uh, yeah, it's got like 600 milligrams of caffeine in it per scoop. You're an I, have, I have half a scoop. How do you sleep sometimes. at night? I don't know. I just put my head down and go to bed. Just I stood up like this. Yeah, I, just, I I remember you know, the pre workout story where I shat and throw up at the same time. Yeah. That's when I had 600 milligrams of caffeine in one go. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, That's God. another great episode. So, the story of Harry shitting himself so, and being sick at the same so time. So, a guy I work with, um, I had it and he was like what's that it's called Gas Mark 10 love that that's a dangerous name it is that's, that's gonna give you I think you we need to come illness. up with a with I think because pre, pre-workout names are always legendary we need I've to come it. up with the best we need your suggestions for a Pump Fiction got it. pre-workout got name it. Chernobyl and we'll coffee. get it ma- done mm, toxic basic. radioactive mm. dead, everyone's dead Take and it, he looked at it and he was like oh can I try some I was like oh no. yeah sure I didn't ask are you gonna train so he had some it's a big big jacked guy Iranian guy he was like brilliant he's like I can't really feel it he walked off half an hour he came back and he had a red face and I was like you okay Faz and he was like yeah I've just been like itchy. got really itchy skin that obviously beta-alanine. the beta- beta-alanine, yeah. which obviously heightens the senses that you can feel things and that's why the tingling effect is just because your receptors in the skin are more sensitive to what's hitting it so it's just the air you can feel against your skin it's just heightened and he was scratching his head like this and he's like oh man is anyone got to go? I was like, you're not going to train. Like, you've just taken a full scoop no. of Gasmark 10. He was like, no, I'm going to get my hair cut. <laughs> yeah, that works. Okay. And then he said he sat in the car for his haircut, just scratching at his skin. That's healthy. That's a bit weird. Yeah. Putting people the guy, I was just like, you are on another level first. It's like people who take pre-workout before running a London marathon. You're just asking for trouble. Yeah, didn't you like, don't need your heart rate to go higher. Didn't some people do that and then... That was, that was the Jack 3D. That's the Jack 3D story. Yeah, which yeah. is the one that got it. Still got it. Sad times. Still got the top. I would not open that. That would be Chernobyl coffee. Bring it in. We'll put it on as put it on the mantelpiece behind. Well, it's, for it the, expired uh, eight years. Yeah, ago, we'll so. just have it as a display model. I you can okay. frame it in the gym if you want. <laughs> Turn it into a trophy. I want to and give it, it to the most bro person. I'm gonna, in the gym. If I ever have children, I'm pass it down. It's probably worth all right now. That's going to be on the Antiques Roadshow in 20 <laughs> years' time. <laughs> you wait. Here we, here we have. This <laughs> is a uh, a bottle of Jack 3D I'm from backing. 2012. I'm backing. I have the oldest oldest tub of it in in the world right now unopened someone proved find me one that's went off before 2015 well there's a challenge if anyone's got ancient pre-workout that they want to bring bring into a show and tell i've hidden it somewhere don't know where i've hidden it somewhere in my house anyway probably the loft the cat's got it 
I would explain a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I would explain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So for second and final topic, I wanted to talk about goal setting. Don't set any. Um, well, that's fine. Clarify, that's a joke. Uh, well, no, but it was because, again, of, of, a t- of a tweet that I read the other day that kind of made me think a little bit. And I'm going to read it to you now and then I'll gauge your opinion on it. Okay. We're um, using Twitter while it's still here. Well, this was before. I, re- I took a note of this before threads happened. Um, but it simply said, I've never been a fan of get fit for the summer. I say get fit for life. Stay on top of your workouts, not just not just a longer but quality lifespan. Oh no, sorry. Stay on top of your workouts nutrition is a lifetime commitment towards not just longer but quality lifespan. Reaching your goals shouldn't just be a finish line but rather beginning of a stronger and healthier version that, that, of you that is here to stay. Well, I think it, if... if <laughs> If getting fit for summer is what is a catalyst for you, Thank you. adopting that lifestyle, Thank then you. what's wrong with that? Well, no, look, so the problem I had with that tweet was it was basically saying, oh, I hate this whole get fit for summer thing. Anything gets people fit, I respect it. And mm. so this person's saying, oh, you shouldn't just get fit for an occasion. You should be like that all year round. Well, I disagree with that. Well, get fit for whatever makes, makes you want to get fit. But I feel like it's like this kind of, these these fitness people that will have this badge of honour that's like oh I, I never have sugar yeah. oh I can't I never have sugar oh, I have sugar free everything or oh I, I never go above maintenance calories or this that and the other whatever they so, do if you don't do it it's wrong and I, yeah. Yeah. and I just don't understand this kind of like negging of like setting yourself a goal to work towards like we all need like okay I agree that it's good to kind of make healthy changes and kind of lead a generally healthy lifestyle I understand mm. that but equally in to, as I get closer towards Christmas I do care less about hitting my targets yeah, and stuff yeah. I'm happy to kind of let go and eat a little <coughs> bit more and be you know I have balance in my life I am an active person so at weekends I will eat shit quite yeah. frequently and then I'll aim to get I'll get straight back on it again maybe Sunday or Monday or whatever but because obviously I'm fairly active most of that stuff evens itself out and yes I can be a bit aggressive with the lower calories during the week to balance it out but I'm okay with that yeah does it work for you I'm feeling like I'm in no, okay no. shape Done. I feel like people that put tweets like that have been a coach for maybe like a year or two and they just haven't quite got, got it yet narrow minded because you think about it like it doesn't it, like you said it doesn't really matter like yeah. if, that, if that gets you going and gets you moving and actually for some people climbing the mountain towards the big goal they want is like that's really tough for yeah, some yeah. people and actually setting some goals might get you there you there's know, nothing so, wrong with setting yeah, there's, nothing there's nothing wrong, wrong with, with giving yourself a target to work towards if it focuses you uh, on get on achieving something hmm. like you get you come across a lot of people who will start a diet or whatever and family members will be like oh you're all right you know it's fine you don't need to do that but if you say to them oh no i'm i'm if you don't say i'm on a diet you say i'm doing a challenge then suddenly they're okay with Same it. Same with drinking. If you say I don't drink or I'm I'm not I'm not drinking for Lent, and you're the, you're the response. strange one. But if you if it's suddenly like a challenge, like um, dry January or whatever, yeah. suddenly it's okay to do it. I have I have a thought on that. I'm wondering if that's also to do with the psychological thing for the pers- the other person that's saying. Worse. Well, you think about it, like a challenge sounds like it's got an end to it. Correct. So it's like that's just a temporary thing you're doing, and then you'll come back to doing what what we're doing. Whereas a change is like, oh, you're changing now. I'm staying the same. Maybe I should change. Well, you're, we don't you're like making changing. me feel a bit yeah. weird about changing. Well, when now. I when I first got into fitness and bodybuilding and all that sort of stuff, like I'd get questions from friends and family saying, "When's all this going to stop?" You had some, you have some friction, didn't you? But yeah, literally, yeah. literally, when I started training, I'll never forget this. My sister was like, "You're going to quit, like you did skateboarding." Terror, I skateboarded for like four or five years. <laughs> it's quite a long time. It's not something yeah. I've done most. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Like, um, and then she was like. Uh, She's like, yeah, yeah, but you'll, you'll quit soon anyway. Anyways, clarify, over 10 years later, still haven't. Who's yeah. laughing now, you knobhead? <laughs> <laughs> Here's some cupped farts, you weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone, it's always the same response. Oh, it's a phase. You'll, you'll grow out of it. No, no, but going back to my initial point, it's like there's nothing wrong with having periods where, like, I feel like the best progress that people, that I see people make is doing things in fa- in stages right mm. so you get people that try and stay healthy all the time and and in deficit to get their goal for too long then they'll end up getting disordered eating or falling off the wagon or whatever whereas if you kind of say right i'm going to do six weeks or four weeks where i'm really good and then i'm going to take a little bit of a break 
just go up to maintenance maybe a bit be a bit above that or i'm going or i'm going to going to do six week cut for holiday and then after the, and then obviously the holiday they get to relax a bit and they eat a bit more and they come back and they're refreshed they're actually ready to go again mm. and surpass that so does that make sense so then yeah, yeah, yeah. by creating goals and by creating like a, this kind of staggered effect you're actually going to you probably get stand more a chance of getting where you want to be by accepting that I'm going to I'm going to allow myself to let go for a period and just enjoy mm. life and just take it as it comes and eat what I want to eat because I know that in a week's time I'll feel ready to go back to you know making those healthy decisions again and maybe being in a calorie deficit to p- push on again and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like these people that these fitness people that preach constantly about and and kind of talk down to people that try and lead a normal life and don't and want to because like when I started fitness I was going to weddings with not Tupperware but I was or I was saying no to a lot of things like we said before in Mm. previous things and I part of me regrets that but part of me acknowledges the fact that I was super focused on what I wanted to achieve and I was super committed yeah but at no point did I look down on other people who no. weren't doing that. You didn't judge them for not doing it. Correct. You were just like, thank you for letting me do it. So I'm not, I'm not, ma- I'm not make, trying to make anyone feel bad for, for not buying into what I want, why I was doing at that point, because yeah. I had a goal. But then you get these fit people who talk down to people for not kind yeah. of living this holier than thou lifestyle. Just get out. Get, I, I get, get out. annoyed when people do it, like when they, they discover like that lifestyle and they've done it for like five minutes and they're like this is what you need to do everyone I've discovered this now I'm going to do this and like yeah good for you you're, you're t- documenting your journey but don't shit all over the last so you've lived your whole life up until that point well it's like the same with anything when you adopt anything like people who get into weightlifting CrossFit veganism whatever it may be when they start oftentimes they take quite a militant approach to it yeah. before because it, it's novel it's novel it's exciting and they want everyone else to see how amazing it is and they kind of balance that and realise actually it's really amazing for me but you don't have to do it if you don't want to Mm. but you almost like find that sustainability I think ultimately when you dismiss anyone or shun anyone for whatever they are trying to achieve it's kind of a negative reflection of yourself like if you want to get fit for a wedding or for a bodybuilding show either way that is a goal that drives you to live hopefully a healthier and better lifestyle then why would you ever discredit that? Yeah. If that? If that's what gets you from here to here and that's where you want to go, as long as it's happy and it's sustainable and it's what you want to do for you, then I respect that you do you. But yeah, but equally, if you <clears throat> put yourself through what was maybe a hard diet to get to that end result, then don't also feel bad if, you, if you're not, if you get there and think, actually, I don't want to sustain this. I was quite yeah. happy where I was. It wasn't quite worth yeah. it. Psychological fatigue is a big factor people neglect. Is a huge mentally, but do you need a break? Have a break. Mm. Which is why I think the staggered approach works because it allows people to try it and then, okay, I like that. I'm going to do a bit more, do a bit more, do a bit more. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the best progress I've made is when I've not gone too hard too fast and I've just kind of done things in bits. Like like I dieted down a bit for the 10K and then after that, for for a few days, I've eaten like a lot of, a lot of like all sorts of things. And now I feel like, okay I've got that out of my system I'm ready to tighten mm. up again and push a bit harder and that, and I feel like that works for me yeah with clients I, I like to layer like habits because if you if you throw the whole lifestyle and bring oh, out a God, new lifestyle yeah. it causes chaos there's a reason why they yo-yo do diets because it's an unsustainable yeah because they're miserable lifestyle. yeah they're like well I can't give up all this forever that's what I kind of say to people is do one thing properly first and then add to it if I say yeah, yeah. let's know your training your sleep your nutrition you're probably going to Shit, go shit with all of them. Mm. Too much is overwhelming. It's unrealistic. So say, let's just let's do your training first. Yeah, done that. You're c- comfortable. That's consistent. We're good. That's not really a consideration. Now that's just that's just brush your teeth. That's routine. Now what's next? Now what's next? So you said layering is do one thing properly at a time, then three things half assed because at least one thing properly at a time, eventually the outcome is hopefully success in the end. If you do three things all at once, the outcome is probably going down yeah. the pan. Yeah, Who's waiting for that? I haven't played any of these sounds in ages. I've kind of neglected all my buttons that I can press. Neglected but. your job. Yeah. <laughs> I need Mr. Producer. Some, I need, yeah, I need some new sounds, maybe. Um, cool. Sick. Cool. Nice. Q&A? Nice. Q&A, yeah, let's have a quick look at some of that. Where yeah. do we go? Hello. <laughs> Wait, it's here. Someone suggested a show topic of Jim pet peeves. I mean, I think we've done this. Before, I think we, we always do that. Yeah. We're always like no, vocal I'll, I'll about people in my gym. List. So what I find, what I find amazing is that doesn't matter. Like, say for example, on a random day, I'll have I'll go to the gym at a completely different time. Same fuckers are there. Yeah, oh, they, no, how does yeah. that happen? 
Yeah, yeah. No, yeah like at weekends, a weekends it'll be like a random Sunday, and I'll, I'll for whatever reason I've had a busy morning of doing something, so I'll randomly go to the gym at two o'clock or something that I'd never normally do. And they're there. Same fuckers there. How go does that work? Home. <laughs> Go Get your family. <laughs> no, I see them walking. No, but I see them walking in at the same. They park at the same time as me. Are you watching what the fuck I'm doing? Yeah, find my friend at like the Truman Show. Find my Chris. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, here's a question. I've been working on my pull-ups and chin-ups for a while, and though I find it really difficult, I love being able to do it. I'm a woman who prefers upper body days. Do you have any tips on how to get more pull-ups? Yes, dips. Ooh elaborate so when you're doing pull-ups you think about the plane of motion that your arms going through extension flexion a dip when it comes to scapular stability strength all the things that you need to get a good pull-up dips are a great addition to your training program if you do lots more dips good dips you'll see your pull-up progress like also increase. Just, also just other variations eat slow eccentric yep. assisted, yeah, yeah, really good things yeah. like that the um the name of the person who asked that question I'm going to struggle to pronounce but it's Harry Moore <laughs> Rain Rainhild R A G N H I L D Ran Ranhild Don't ask me I, can't my own name. I forgot the first letter as soon as you said it <laughs> my brain started thinking about uh, my own name <laughs> Oh uh, Daddy <laughs> Yeah Okay Cool What else we got <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a big one. I have to come back. I have to read that one. That looks enormous. That's what she said. Look at the size of that comment. I'm come back to that one. Wow, we. Wow, we indeed. <laughs> Someone's asked for a show just purely on Harry's stories. No, you don't know that. Okay, and maybe trouble. stories from Chris and Mark. I mean, we kind of try and do our stories. When I try we and can. keep a few of my story hidden. I'm not gonna lie. I'm in trouble for mine. There's lots of things yeah. I don't want to talk about. So I, I want to <laughs> leave. I want to leave something of. off the internet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't get cancelled just yet. Yeah, literally. Well, so we got. I think. Uh, Is that one just an emoji? No. Is it a poo? Uh, someone yeah. said you guys have talked a lot about how to pick a coach or a trainer, but how do you do you pick clients? Like, yeah, um, what kind of. are your what are your favorite and least favorite qualities in a client? And have you ever decided to stop working with someone? Yes, I've fired clients before because they just don't do what you say. Because there just comes a point where you just think to yourself, like, you're not ready. I've done ever I've done the same things in ten different ways, and you're still not buying into it. And as a coach as experienced as I am, like, sure, there might be a there might be a, an eleventh way which I don't know, but that just means I'm not the right coach for you and I think personalities are so important you buy coaches not coaching like you've got to gel with your coach yeah. Yeah, I've, I've sat clients when they just they just don't they don't want to do it they're not ready they don't want to hear what you want to say they just want someone to tell them you can do it your way they, they're not willing to invest yeah. in, in, the, in the actual way of doing it do you ever find that you get some you'll notice that some PTs will have clients for a long period of time and it's almost like they've reached this comfort stage when mm. neither are willing to kind of walk away from it. Like they've yeah. not made any progress. It's almost like the relationship now is what they're paying for. Yeah, I think it depends why, again, it depends why they're paying. Like I've got, I've got two clients in person, the only two I actually see in person, which I basically said like, I will PT them in person for as, as long as they're there. But once they leave, I'm, I'm done. I only PT for them. Um, and they've been with me for literally like three or four years. Yeah. And, they, and they both acknowledge that they, uh, they probably don't need PTing. They just want to for the accountability. Yeah. And for the, I think for the communication, and stuff like mm. we obviously I know, they know they know if they if i'm not there they probably wouldn't go on their own yeah that's an interesting one actually because like obviously you'll get pts who'll have clients that only <coughs> stay with them to achieve a goal like we talked about goal setting mm. but then you'll have the same pt might have a client that they've had for maybe five years yeah and they'll kind of go through waves of progress and so on and a lot of it just comes down to the fact that if they didn't have that PT in their life, then they would lose the accountability, the routine, yeah, the yeah. kind of the the counselling side of it. Mm. I think all I kind of ask with clients is, I always say communication is on you. I think a coach should never be there to babysit. If you want no. to message me every day, I fully encourage that. More communication, better. But if you don't want to contact me, I, it's not my job to chase you all the time saying, like, are you, are you there? Are you yeah. there? Are you there? Like I say my clients, like I obviously talk to most of my clients every day, but for example, every week when I update programs, I always send them a voice note just saying, just this is what we've changed. Has nothing changed or something changed? I'll always send them voice note updating. Some clients won't get back to me for weeks on end, but it's not, as a coach, I'm not there to babysit you to say, like, are you there? Are you there? I'm just trusting that if you're not getting back to me, you're doing what you need to do. Mm -hmm. If you don't, it's kind of on you to say, 
oh by the way can we change this like I've, I'll send voice note voice note voice note and they just don't get back and that, that's on them yeah um, but I think when it comes to, like all I, all I kind of ask the people is I just trust that they're doing what they're meant to do and if they aren't just talk to me and say what can we do to change it to allow mm. you to do what you're meant to do is there something going on in your life okay let's, let's step away from this let's focus on what's going on in your life that needs to needs yeah. the support or whatever it may be but I don't know that unless you talk to me but it's not like I said like a coach it's not my job to drag it out of you no I'm not I'm not there to force communication from you I, I would just I, you're a resource yeah you're a guide they still have to be the hero of their own story well, you it's, probably it's, it's yeah. cringes it sounds you like, can lead a horse to water but you can't make a yeah. drink yeah. and that's what you always have to remember but I think yeah. you probably have some clients that don't probably don't talk to you that much no but, but you, yeah, you trust like, they're probably getting on with it they have, a, they have an accountability tab on their program and they fill it in if they don't put it in there I won't ask yeah, because I'm just the like I've the, the longer I've been coaching, the more hands off I've become. Mm. I'm like, if you're not sure about an exercise, film it, send it to me on WhatsApp, and I'll voice note you. Because yeah. I've got to a point now where my coach's eye is astute enough that I can see the problem and say, yeah, yeah. stand them up, ribs down. Yeah, it's that simple. And that's then that's the, all they need. Don't overcoach. There's that, no need. That's to. the thing is, people. I think a lot of people when they feel guilty overcoach. When I think a good coach is someone for you to go to, not someone who drags it out of you yeah, if that yeah, makes yeah. sense but I've had similar to you I've had clients where I never necessarily like fired them as clients like, more for when I was in person I've had clients that when like COVID hit um, or like I changed gyms or whatever they were like okay well, let me know when you're at the next gym and I kind of we kind of just left it there yeah. because I had one guy in particular who was like I was really excited to coach him he's into rugby cricket I was like this is a bit of me I, I was new to the industry at this point like new to actually PTing um, so it was quite some years ago and he just was incapable of training intensity like mm. if you did more than eight reps it's like that's way too much I can't do it <laughs> so we do eight reps but intensity if I was like okay because I'm pushing a bit harder he'd have like ten left in the tank he was like ah, no it's starting to burn now I'm cool at that I was like I'm not really growing you're, like, you're and, yeah, so and, far from failure and that's the thing he would say like oh obviously like our oh, progress isn't really amazing I'm like but that's because you're not capable of training intensity oh can we just do more still need the intensity it's oh. like oh can we drive a car still don't have any wheels on it man you yeah. need the wheels first then you could drive the car throw that junk volume in there you might get an effective rep yeah if you're lucky. Thing. and I, I kind of had that point I was a bit like I was just, not frustrated I was disappointed because I was like you take really, it personally don't you yeah I was really excited bit. to finally train this is my first like sports specific client I'd ever yeah. had all those years ago I was just really disappointed like of all the clients I had I was training these people who were in their 60s and this guy was like probably mm. only five years older than me who would train so hard and like I was like this is nothing Athlete. Yeah, and then I was yeah. like, but you're the athlete. Why are you of all my clients, he had the worst work ethic of anyone that Some I Some athletes are so lazy though. Yeah. And I was a bit like They're so talented, they just don't need to try sometimes. Yeah. That's the thing. I've I had a like, client that's like that. And it was just a bit like, oh okay. And then at that point we didn't I didn't I say I'm not gonna work with you anymore. We just kind of decided that I wasn't yeah. gonna contact him anymore. When, when the block was over, yeah, we just kind of yeah, yeah. we separated. He let didn't it, chase me, I didn't let chase it him. Phase out, yeah. yeah, like we didn't chase each other, and I think that was a mutual thing of he didn't really want a PT, he just wanted felt like he needed like the one. idea of it maybe. yeah and then I, yeah. at that point I was a bit like I kind of I'd rather take my time back and I yeah. should give it to someone who maybe I, I know in the consultation if I'm going to get on with someone I, yeah. I, like, I, I've learned now the right questions to ask the right follow up questions to know are you going to be that 20% which causes 80% of my problems and if so I do have a price sometimes well I used to have a price mm -hmm. that I would uh inflate slightly because I was like I know I'm going to have to inconvenience tax yeah an inconvenience tax well, that's the thing is everyone's like oh how much is your coach let's say your coaching is 150 pounds a month and oh, that's really expensive like it's actually expensive how much does a normal average PT is at least when I, when, when I qualified 10 years ago it was 41 pounds an hour yeah for, for average yeah, 35 40 pounds easily that, yeah. that's, that was average this was 10 years ago and you see, see a PT most people probably more than once a week let's say once a week 40 pounds an hour once a week that's still 160 pounds a month that's still more expensive than 150 pounds a month coaching whatever you end up charging see that pt multiple times it's like it's actually you only get them for that hour if you have an online coach you have them for multiple hours in the week do you know what i mean you, they do everything the, yeah, the yeah. influences they're not physically there because <laughs> when covid started average p average online coaching price if i saw someone charge like anywhere from 60 to 100 pounds i thought that was like an average online coaching mm -hmm. price yeah. covid hit obviously online coaching boomed and now if i see people charge like multiple hundred pounds a month i'm like that's not that bad yeah like if i see someone charge 150 200 pounds a month for online coach i'm like yeah that's not that's not extortionate anymore if you're a good coach you can coach online but the same as like not everyone should be a coach not everyone has yeah. the skill set to be an online coach either because yeah, it's not yeah. just about updating programs and being like hi oh, your new block's ready yeah it's like you've got to be able to foresee problems that now you don't even have someone in front of you to talk to and also the thing of like a client comes to you I've had this before where a client says oh, I want to do this and do this you you have to have that the foresight to say 
is that actually right for you? Like, mm-hmm. you want to do this, but are you in the headspace to actually do that? Because you're struggling with this and you're now asking for this. Like, a client comes to you, says to you, I, I'm really struggling with this deficit. I, I want to get out of it as soon as possible. Then a few days later, yeah, push it for as long as you need. Those are contradictory. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I think, like, if you push it for as long as you need, what's the fallout of that? Are you going to fall off the wagon? You're going to mm. lose passion? You're not going to enjoy it? You're going to burn out? Is this really right? Whereas with a PT, they kind of come in, what's our session today? Done. That's kind of all you get. And with an online coach, you need to be able to track the right metrics as well. Mm. So you can actually see someone's like, yeah, I'm not doing very well. And it's like, well, your mood's up, your energy's up. Yeah. Your, but, your strength's up. You're performing but, well. And all your videos, you look good. So that's why at the, um, the bottom like, of my sheet, I have like lifestyle questions of yeah, what's your yeah. sleep been like, digestion, how's your mood been? Like things like that, where we can say, okay, well, it's one thing tracking performance, but I said another thing tracking lifestyle because, okay, you've had a really bad day in the gym. Okay, let's look back. Technically, look good. Sleep was okay digestion's really off that's concerning your mood's been in the bin you said you're really struggling with your anxiety these last few days okay now we can probably find the problem around yeah yeah do you feel a lot of your anxiety in your gut do you actually want to get anxious feel quite sick okay so you're probably not eating as well digestion's obviously all out of whack we're going to toilet a lot more things like that Mm. this is probably sapping your energy from this and also you've probably got other things to worry about whereas i think coaches that often just say here's program done you're a bit like or well, they whack in a deload. Yeah, that's it's like, like, oh, you need a deload. It's yeah, like, yeah. Or it's just an acute stress and they're reacting to it. The other thing I find quite tricky with clients is they expect a lot of changes. Like Hypertrophy Coach did a oh, yeah, really good a video, like a really good yeah. video on this. And I think we've spoken about this before where we say of all the things a, a, cl- a coach offers you, the programming is the, the least yeah. the least or the one with the least variation that's the one that should once you kind of nail it down should change as frequently as possible use them for support use them for education use mm. them for form analysis you use them for foreseeing problems use them for all these reasons the programming is that that's that's lesson one of the Elementary. drive that's driving lesson one yeah, it's, yeah. Um, use the rest for, it's getting out yeah. first gear the funny yeah. the funny thing when you talk about that people, clients that want variation all the time so I consider myself quite a good coach. I've done work with some cool people. When I go and train myself, I'd say for the last you know few months, I've done the same fucking workouts. Most same workout for a year. Most mostly like with a few like slight. I'll I'll maybe ch- like cycle a few things. Yeah. But it's always the same exercises, just in variations of. Just yeah. I can't. And I've yeah. made. That's how you make progress I imagine if you could just do the same thing over and over again and you didn't have to learn any new skills any new movements you didn't have to stress about, about anxiety of a new machine yeah. all these things you knew exactly how to set it up you could literally squeeze that sponge of every drop and then yeah and progress, progress faster than if you just bounced around in loads of things yeah, like go some do people, crossfit like, like if you want varied workout modalities mm. go and do something that subs do that and yeah. then look at the results that you get from it like you get yeah, really yeah. good at a lot of things but not great at anything i think another thing is when people are oh but for motivation perspective i really struggled doing the same thing over and over again it's like yeah but Why? are you in the are you doing the right thing then yeah, yeah. if you're like like obviously training i do the same program for many many months and my motivation is not I'm excited to do this workout at six I'm excited to see the results yeah um, so can't wait like, to see some more work in today yeah or like I yeah, can't yeah. wait to put, got, finally get up to five plates on this machine that's, yeah, that, that's a bit exciting more weight, yeah. that's, that's months like four off, weeks that, yeah, to that, get there that's <laughs> it, it, it might be months away but I'm like but I'm going to get there yeah, yeah. and when I get there I feel like I've achieved something then what's next I'm wondering if that's because you're really bought into the, the how and the why so you Maybe, know yeah. that actually getting to, from four plates to five plates people you know the average person would be like it's one plate what's the big deal and actually you look at it and you're like yeah but that means that all of these other things have come together converged yeah. to create i shaved them i shaved a minute <laughs> yeah, off, yeah. i shaved a minute off my 10k time this weekend it's great which to most people doesn't seem like a lot but it's actually quite a lot in a tennis well, how much yeah. does it cost for formula one to shave a second off well not even a second billions yeah billions. they're trying to show that uh, if you look at the difference between first place and like 10th place and qualifying in formula one it's yeah. like it's like tenth of a second yeah. Yeah. between all of them well uh, did anyone ever play runescape back in the day kind of my brother my brother used to buy so that you would have skills RuneScape. you would have skills that you would level up yeah obviously let's say strength you'd level up so it would go from one to 99 at to put into perspective of the higher you get the harder it becomes when you are rich from it obviously you gain experience level one to this is 10 experience and 20 whatever um to get from to, when you were halfway to 99 you weren't at 50 you were at level 96 so level 96 was halfway to 99 from an experience perspective so to get from 1 to 90, level 96 you needed to gain 6.5 million experience to get from 96 to 99 you needed 6.5 million experience so however long it took you to get from there to there will just be compounds the same. yeah and that's the same with training to get from 
one to four plates might take me two years yeah, but yeah. to get from four to five plates probably true. take me two years as well actually it's like the idea you don't want to become an advanced trainee because at that point <laughs> the gains are worse. so marginal you're happy if you wake up the same yeah literally like, you're, you're <laughs> busting your balls especially yeah. naturally without enhancements you're busting your balls to say I gained two pounds of muscle this year yeah it's not, it's not actually a lot of muscle but I'd you have to that. I'd yeah, take you, two pounds you, of muscle. you'd have to do everything right to achieve that and then in doing everything yeah. right you probably don't need to do anything differently just do it all better I think it's just one of those things you just got to walk the walk, haven't you? Once you've done it, you yeah. get it. Why do you think I keep looking for new challenges? Because I miss progress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I reached a point with bodybuilding where I can't really get much better than Naturally, I have. Naturally, you kind of like reach your, yeah. you've reached your 90, level 96 where to get that anything would take so long Trend. yeah exactly an extra pound. Trend? yeah Trend. <laughs> Hello. i know a guy anyway look yeah. um i think that's quite enough of that for one episode and this has been a good one i feel yeah. feels we like love a bit waffle. back into our stride again back in two weeks then i'm way in america in the new oh, home so God. what so how you're back in two weeks yes so I, I we're back here in two weeks but i go to america on the 2nd of august so, so in three weeks for how long are you in america uh two and a bit weeks oh, okay so, not so i'm too back long. on the i get back on the evening of like the I think it's either evening of the 18th or morning of the 19th or something so we'll pr- so, so then the week after we'll be back fine 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 there'll right, be a day we're doing fine we're doing fine and it's uh, it's good to be back it's good to have you all listening and watching and all that sort of stuff um, we're talking to ourselves right now yeah, yeah. thanks guys yeah <laughs> thanks, um, thanks for listening this is but, really nice um, do keep coming at us with your questions and topics and any confessions and all that sort of stuff follow us on the Instagram account that Mike hasn't updated in ages no I actually forgot to log back Event. into it Neither, I don't even know the password <laughs> No, I we don't have access it. to it. Um, no, we you told me once, but I forgot it. it. But okay. do do access, do get in touch with us via that anyway. There's a link tree on there, isn't there, Michael? That all works. That <laughs> all works. And there's a uh, a form you can fill in if you have any questions for us. Or just send us messages on our personal Instagram accounts. He's Radical.Mike. He's Harry underscore TFNL. And I'm Chris D. Fellows. And this has been episode 20 of Pump Fiction. <laughs> Bang. And Mike's about to drive to the airport. Yeah, uh, he should probably be leaving now. Uh, he's um, not. He's not going anywhere, by the way. He's just going to pick someone up. Holiday? What's one I of wish. those? And now we're going to sit here awkwardly while the outro plays and not know what to do. Is that is that fine? Are we happy with that? Yes. Should we play the outro? Hit the it. Bit. All right. See you later.